हेलो ढीनसा सर हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी सर हेलो हाँ जी सर रेडी है सर ओके मैं क्या सारे एक बारी टेस्टिंग करके देखनी है स्पीकर में वॉइस भी एक बारी फाइनल डन है सर डन है ओके आ मानपीत मैडम आप प्रोफेसर संदीप इंजीनियर आ मानपीत कॉल एक बारी लास्ट फाइनल कर दो जी एक बारी स्पीक एनी थिंग फ्रॉम योर साइड हेलो यस 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 फाइन आ मानपीत एम आई ऑडिबल या फाइन फाइन एवरीथिंग इज ओके जतेंद्र एवरीथिंग इज ओके फाइन सर फाइन फाइन सर ओके आ संदीप प्लीज स्टार्ट respected major general dr g s lamba principal of the college dr kanwal veer singh team sir professor and head department of csc dr manpreet kaur head research and innovation center and in charge bbs bec alumni engineer amanpreet kaur it administrator wipro technologies canada faculty members of bbs bec research scholars delegates from industry and my dear students a very good morning to one and all i sandeep kotanda coordinator of the event from department of csc welcomes all of you on this webinar alumni talks it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our distinguished speaker engineer amanpreet kaur from batch 2003 Engineer Aman Amanpreet Kaur is working with Wipro Technologies Canada. Prior to joining Wipro Technologies, Amanpreet has worked with Tata Consultancy Services Gurgaon from December 2011 to October 2015 as an Oracle DBA. She has also worked with Tambukom Canada Corporation Mississauga from May 2018 to August 2018. She has also worked with Excel Technologies from August 2008 to December 2011 as an system engineer. She is certified Oracle professional, having over 8.5 years of DBA experience in fast IT industry. She is proficient in Oracle 10G, 11G, 12C, RAC clustering, performance tuning. Golden Gate in Unix and Linux environment. She has also worked on projects like Jimmer, Jaguar for management of RAC databases. She has an experience to create standards and guideline documents for setting standards for databases. Now I request Dr. Kanwal Veer Singh Tinsa, Professor and Head, CSC Department, to formally welcome the distinguished speaker. Over to you, sir. Uh, my voice and uh, voice is audible, Sandeep. Yes, sir. Uh, image is fine. Video. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Okay, we have to check again with the uh, principal sir is here. And I. No. No, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today at uh, uh, Baba Vinod Singh Bahadur Engineering College, Fatehgarh Sahib, we are proud to host our uh, first alumni webinar, in which we are having our distinguished speaker of the day, Engineer Amal Peep Kaur. And she is alumni of uh, uh, she is pass out of the batch 2003. She will be highlighting the various aspects and uh, discussing her experiences of her journey from other college BBS BC to how she is working and how she has reached there in Wipro Technologies Canada. I, on behalf of CSC Department, welcome Engineer Amalpreet Kaur. for this webinar alumni talk and uh, it's really a pleasure for us to have you for our this first alumni webinar 
since uh, uh, this is the first time CSC department is having alumni webinar, but I assure you that in uh, times to come, we'll be having more such webinars in future, and that will be all will be successful only with the efforts of the alumni we are having around the world. Uh, I discussed with the engineer Amanpreet Kaur also about uh, uh, that how she can be helpful in organizing more such webinars and uh, uh, finding our alumni who have reached to greater heights and have uh, joined uh, greater positions in various MNCs also around the world. So, uh, but for this time, Engineer Ramanpreet Kaur has become the first founding member of our alumni talk and this is, this is a great honor. Uh, it is with the dedicated efforts of faculty and staff of uh, CSC department that the uh, YouTube channel of the CSC department which was launched on 29th July this year. And uh, till now we have got near about 350 subscribers for that. And uh, I request again everyone to subscribe for same and uh, it is uh, easy to share our views, our discussions, our uh, events, seminars, uh, conferences, anything, whatever we are doing in the department and in our college, which would have been not otherwise possible in this uh, times of COVID, which is a difficult phase going on, but to keep everyone motivated, our students, our faculty, uh, we need to organize more such webinars and uh, uh, before this we were having a webinar on stress management also. Uh, for everyone's info, this uh, webinar is going live streamed on Facebook page of the college and the YouTube channel of the CSE department. In addition to the uh, Google Meet we are having here. Engineer Amanpreet Kaur has very readily agreed for this webinar and uh, we are really really thankful to her for sparing her time from such a busy schedule which she is having at Wipro Technologies in Canada. She is working as a database administrator and uh, IT uh, in charge and uh, uh, I have taught her class and I found uh, every uh, time her to be a very dedicated, hard working and uh, throughout his life, uh, she has achieved uh, various milestones with, which she will be discussing uh, just soon after. Uh, we have with also, I welcome uh, Dr. Manpreet Kaur in charge uh, alumni of our college uh, and uh, head of the research department. She will also be sharing her views regarding uh, how various alumni can be more reconnected and uh, how we can have this alumni network more extendable so that it can work more for the benefits of the current students also. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Professor Sandeep Kaur uh, Tanda for organizing uh, this webinar and she is in charge alumni for the CSE department. She has worked really hard for this uh, special initiative. I congratulate all the department, uh, CSE department faculty uh, and the college um, faculty members, staff members for putting their best uh, effort, best uh, foot forward in optimizing the things and making every endeavor successful. Regarding the CSE department, I just wish to highlight some of the achievements uh, because this is an alumni and uh, various alumni around the world, they have also, uh, they are also part of this webinar now. Uh, for everyone information, uh, we have got MBA accreditation uh, and uh, this is the fourth time our department has brought which is for BTEC CSE. And uh, it is a unique uh, achievement and it is a rare feat uh, which is not uh, available. This uh, MBA accreditation for BTEC CSE is not available around uh, in many colleges around us. And uh, currently we are running uh, MTEC. CSE Computer Science and Engineering, Bachelor of Vocational Course, that is a three year course in uh, software development. And we have started also this time uh, Bachelor of Computer Applications, a BCA course, which is uh, the first time which we have started with uh, 30 seats this time. Uh, CSE department is having a state of the art research lab such as Internet of Things, which we have established in the last year. 
and it is a unique lab which students can work for uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, the deep learning aspects with, with that. And we have a machine vision lab also. We have got a iOS lab in which we are having all Apple PCs on which the students can work, and the Cisco lab related with networking. Uh, moreover, uh, CSE department, computer science and engineering department has taught uh, Nike uh, for itself for uh, in starting uh, the, and maintaining the various uh, uh, centers of excellence, uh, remote centers. And uh, we are having various academic collaborations with the remote companies such as uh, uh, Oracle, Red Hat and Cisco. And the more efforts have been uh, done related with uh, uh, the academic collaborations with IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, and uh, IIT Ropal. Uh, so all these efforts are going on uh, from the CSE department end, and uh, all this has been made possible only due to the team efforts of each member of the uh, computer science and engineering uh, uh, department. I would say family, which is uh, both the faculty and staff. So. Uh, I request all participants to fill uh, the feedback form also, so as to get uh, the e certificates which everyone would uh, like to have. Uh, Professor Sandeep has designed that, and uh, uh, it is a very unique certificate. And for the feedback form, you need to uh, put in the uh, uh, feedback form will be put in the chat box here only in Google Meet, and you can fill that. And uh, before the uh, this uh, webinar talk end, you have to fill that and uh, respond to that. So, uh, without taking uh, much time, uh, I again welcome our distinguished speaker, uh, source person, and our alumni, engineer Aman Kritkar. Uh, welcome to you. Uh, and uh, so, I request you to share your views, thoughts, and experiences on uh, uh, your uh, which is webinar which we have named for this. And uh, that is a journey from BBS BC to Wipro. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, audible. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. So, uh, good morning, friends. I can see a lot of uh, students have already joined in. So, hope all of you are uh, keeping healthy and staying safe with this unpredictable times of Corona. I hope everybody is safe and you know staying healthy. So, I would like to start um, by extending my heartfelt thank you uh, to Professor Tinsa sir and Professor Sandeep for arranging this talk with you all. Last but not the least, a big thank you to Honorable uh, Principal Sir uh, for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all. So uh, Sandeep, Professor Sandeep has already introduced me to you, uh, but just to give you a brief about me, my name is Amanpreet Kaur, and I'm a former student uh, from Batch 2003 CSE department. Uh, currently, I'm working with uh, Wipro Canada as an IT administrator lead. And believe me, I'm loving everything about my job. So it is, um, you know, fascinating and challenging at the same time because in IT, it's a 24 cross 7 environment. You go through many challenges, you learn technical skills, you know, you go through a lot of uh, new technical challenges on daily basis. So it's like a very, um, you know, fast environment, very fast paced environment where you learn new things, but, you know, you have to face challenges on daily basis. So it is like you are learning plus you are growing as a professional. Now, before, uh, before I start discussing about my career and my journey so far, um, you know, till Wipro Canada, I would like to emphasize more on college life that you are part of. So um, I have prepared some notes for you here. The big thing about college is learning about yourself. You know, this is the time when you explore about yourself. Um, initially, till school life, you know, it's still you are in a teenage life. But after you enter a college, you become more mature, you, you know, learn new skills. So this is the first introduction to the outside world. This is the time when you are introduced to the outside world, you know. College life gives you the opportunity to explore about your calibers, you know, your fears, you know, face your fears. This is the time when teenage years end and you enter and you, uh, you know, dig deep into, dive deep into the ocean of new possibilities and beginnings. So Baba Banda Singh Bahadur Engineering College was no different for us. This was the golden period of our lives. And I, I believe my you know, co, co students will also believe the same thing, that this was the golden period of our lives where we have 
you know cherished many good memories learned you know learned many uh, many new skills and we have grown as a person uh, professor sandeep she was not just my batchmate she's my fast friend as well so you can always ask her about these things this is really you know a, a, a very memorable period of your lives that you are experiencing right now these four glorious years uh, uh, for you know these four gl glorious years have equipped us in a way that we can't imagine you know they have given us the power to face our face new challenges you know and uh, created a strong foundation of knowledge in our lives so if i talk about baba banda singh bahadur engineering college so be it the infrastructure of the college be it the well equipped labs i, I have heard from uh, uh, insa sir that the labs have refined in, over time right so they are more more you know well equipped these days and be it the professors you know which are which you got in the form of mentors there so everything uh, you know everything has to offer you a great you know a great experience you know you can learn more this college has you know has every offering that you need to be successful in life all the faculty all the faculty of this um, lovely college this beautiful uh, you know infrastructure they are more than just professors they are the mentors they are the caregivers they are your friends right and basically they are your torch bearers so all of you know who's a torch bearer right the person who lightens up your path you know who shows you the way towards success so uh, you know if you consider if you talk to your professors go to them you know talk to them if you have any doubts you clear those doubts because this is the period of your lives when you will learn when you will grow as a person so uh, you know our professors have you know shown us and lighted our paths towards glory and success they have inspired us you know towards our valuable goals Mm. I'm hearing some background noise here. Okay, so they have inspired us towards our valuable goals. Whatever we are today, it is just because of their guidance, support, and direction. They have inspired us. They have shown the right paths. That's why we are successful today. And I would say you guys are so lucky to be part of this um, esteemed organization, this esteemed institute. Not just because this college has so much potential to offer you, but also because um, you know it's a it's a sacred place. Fatehgarh Sahib is a sacred place. You know, righteousness, good virtues, courage, and determination. It's all part of the environment. All you need is a bit of hard work from your end to you know make your lives a successful story to tell to the future students or you know. tell to the rest of the world so i would say you are so uh, you know you are you are in a learning phase right now you can learn more ideas you can learn you know you are still you still have that stamina to learn more so college life it's if i talk about college life it's a perfect blend of joy and hardships right because you struggle you learn you grow as a person and this is the time when you meet new people you know multiple cultures come under the same roof because i, I bet that um, fatehgarh sahib um, baba banda singh bahadur engineering college uh, we have students not just from punjab but outside states as well so uh, you grow as a person because multiple cultures come under the same roof you uh, you know you try to understand each other you learn new ideas you learn new cultures so it's a perfect blend for you to grow as a person as well you will understand once you are in college that how to talk with each other how to judge each other's behaviors this it helps you you know with the important life skills um, believe me these are the friendships these are the you know friends you will cherish your entire life we still look back on on to you know uh, it's been 13 years i passed out from this college i graduated i still look back at those years to cherish the beautiful memories so the next lesson the most important lesson that i learned you know being with bbs bec is that learning never ends learning is a never ending curve so group studying group studying is very important as a student it's really important for you so group studying share, sharing common ideas with each other you know sharing common interests and discussions on topics sometimes we argue on topics right so arguments discussions the healthy discussions i would say debates they make you strong enough to face your fears because you learn to you learn how to speak in public public speaking is very important when you you know when you come into it it's really important lastly i would like to say that the campus this campus has refined me in ways that i never thought of it has given me um, you know it has made me a human who is not perfect but 
still knows how to work towards perfection. So, and I bet you will experience the same, uh, you know, uh, once you pass out and you enter the outside world, you will also experience the same feelings that we have today for uh, the sustained organization. So uh, one thing that I would like to advise you is that please cherish these four years. These, these are the beautiful moments of your life that you will never get back. Most importantly, follow the paths your professor, professors are leading you to, you know, follow what they are teaching you to, because this is the time you will, you know, build a milestone for your future, you know. And OK, so this is all from my college life that I wanted to share with you. Key things that, you know, right now we know Corona situation is going on. So being a student, key things that you should focus on while, you know, handling this situation is please nourish your bodies and refresh your mind, which is really important. Make sure you are eating healthy. Don't eat junk food because you are a student. You are learning as well. You are spending time on lectures. Please make sure you eat healthy. Try exercising before you study. You know, have a couple of, you know, small workouts before you study. Drink more water, keep hydrated. Please drink more water because it's really important for you because it's a lot of work being a student. Take short breaks. When I talk about short breaks, I mean breathers, like five minutes break, not long breaks, like 30 minute break for, you know, in one go. So take breaks, eliminate, you know, eliminate external distractions. I know we are using smartphones these days, which are really important because during our times when we were students, we were still using those Nokia 1100 phones. We never had those smartphones, right? So you guys are lucky enough that technology has evolved over time and you have these smartphones with you. You, you have whole world in your pocket. You can, you know, learn new skills anytime. You can explore about anything, you know. But still, while you are studying from your books, keep your phones away, you know, keep the distractions actions away because that's really important while you study and you know last but not the least motivation is really important when you are a student i know sometimes it gets boring when you are studying sometimes it gets you know difficult for you so during uh, you know during your lectures or between your lectures when you take a break or you know when when you have some free time read some motivational books if not books then please go go and read some you know youtube uh, you know, some uh, motivational speakers on YouTube. There are a number of entrepreneurs on YouTube. Uh, we have Sandeep Maheshwari. He's a very good entrepreneur. You can always, uh, you know, you know, listen to him, you know, listen some lectures from him. So this is really important as a student. This is all from, uh, you know, my student life. If you have any questions, you can always ping me in the chat. So before i start with my journey as a professional and you know tell you my experiences that how um, you know i have moved from um, wipro and then again with wipro i started my career back in 2007 with wipro only so if you have any questions till now you can always ping me i'll give a small pause like a minute's pause and then we will start with my journey so far Uh, you can continue. All right. Okay. So uh, I haven't seen any questions till now. So uh, now my journey as a professional. Like to before a few announcements for students. If you have any question during the presentation, please type them in the chat box. I will bring them up during the presentation, and we will also have time for questions at the end. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, okay. So. Uh, to talk about my journey as a prof uh, professional, uh, I you know, graduated back in 2007. I am from 2003 batch. So we all graduated in 2007. But unfortunately, uh, when I graduated, I was without a job. Because during my you know, college life, I was not clear about my goals. I will not talk about my achievements here. I'll talk about the ground reality. Because I want you to know the ground reality, right? So. I had no job when I passed, you know, I graduated from the college. But once the college was over, reality hit me really hard because future was blurry and there were no opportunities to grab. 
So uh, that then I realized that how important and how critical it is to get a job while you know get a campus placement basically while you are uh, while you are still studying. It is really important for you to grab a job. You know during your uh, during uh, during your college life. Uh, you know if you get a placement, then you your you know journey begins then and there only, which is really important. How important it is to prepare for entrance exams of big firms, big brands, which is really important again. But bygones were bygones. By, uh, we we uh, we graduated in April 2007, but I had no job at that time. But I took my first step and I moved to Delhi. Rented out a PG there and uh, appeared for a couple of walk-ins before I got my first job. So there was only a month's gap between my first job and my graduation. I graduated in April 2007, and by June 2nd, 2007, I acquired my first job with Wipro. So I I started my career back in. 2007 with Wipro only, you know, uh, via walk-in interview. So uh, I worked for America Online. It's a broadband, uh, you know, it's a broadband, it's an American bro broadband project. So I worked for America Online there, and it was really a good experience. That job has refined me, you know, to an extent that within 10 months of the tenure with uh, Wipro, as a you know uh, in uh, AOL that is America Online, I was able to acquire my second HCL. job in HCL because the, because job, the job that, that I, I you know I got, got my first, first job, job in Wipro, that, that job was, was not up to up the part. It was it not was up to my expectations. So I was looking for a change immediately once I joined in. But that job has given me a lot of opportunities. It has refined me as a person, and I got my second opportunity with HCL within ten months. So I joined HCL as a system admin, and it was a, it was a knock engineer job basically, and the designation was system admin, and that job has refined my technical skills to a level that I learned uh, networking, I learned basics of Unix Linux. Being a knock engineer, you work on different technologies at L1 level. So um, you know it was it is the time of 2008. So I learned networking, I learned uh, Unix Linux. And uh, after that, there was no looking back. The mainly, you know, the major thing that I learned was DBMS during that time, the practical implementation of DBMS. So I got in, I got keenly interested in databases. And after a tenure of two years with HCL, uh, I got the, you know, opportunity inside HCL, um, you know, for Oracle DBA, that is database administration. So it was an opportunity where I had to shadow Oracle DBA team. You know, I got that opportunity during that phase only. I did my certifications in Oracle 9i, 10g, 11g certifications. So I stayed with HCL for 3.5 years in total. And uh, after two years being a knock engineer, I got the job as an Oracle DBA within the company, which was very good for my uh, career and which was very, you know, uh, it was very interesting because uh, being a DBA, it has its own challenges and then its own excitement, right? I remained in HCL for, uh, as I told you, for 3.5 years before moving to TCS. So TCS was my third company in India back home. So let me tell you, all these opportunities that came to me back home, they were all through walk-in interviews. In a walk-in interview, it is first a written test and then technical round. It depends upon the company whether it's a one technical round or two technical rounds. And the, finally, there is HR round. Once you go through all these rounds, finally you get an offer letter from the company. All three, you know, all three companies that I was placed back home were through walk-in interviews, and it was really good experience. And uh, so till November 2011, I was with HCL before moving to TCS. It was privilege working with TCS because um, uh, that also as a DBA because uh, I joined a project called JLR, which is Jaguar and Land Rover. If, if um, I think many of you might be aware of that, and you are reading news as well, that uh, Jaguar and Land Rover World is it's a UK-based company, but it is acquired by Tata. So TCS has already acquired this back in 2008. So when I joined TCS, JLR was my first project, and uh, I was lucky enough to be the pilot batch of that project. In a pilot batch, you learn how a project evolves. You go through transitioning phase of the project. You go through uh, documentation phase of the project. You go through the go live phase of the project, and finally, you know, operations. How you implement it. So I have seen a lot during that, you know, during that phase when I started with this TCS. Okay, so I learned a lot of technologies of Oracle. Turns at associate and professional level. 
so far i have worked on um, various projects in all these three companies one is dow jones it's a american stock exchange i got that project in hcl zimmer it's a pharmaceutical company johnson and johnson and jaguar and land rover so in 2015 now uh, this journey was going very smooth it was going very well in 2015 um, i think september october we got our pr here i i was married by that time and i we got our pr and uh, uh, now i'm going to share a mistake that i have committed during that phase because i don't want to show you only achievements i want you to know the real mistakes you know i don't regret mistakes make uh, mistakes when you make a mistake it is you know you should always learn from it don't take it as like you know a regret so i made a mistake because um, my company tcs i had dependability in my team TCS was offering me uh, that okay you got the PR stay back in India for another six months you know create a backup for you somebody should replace you and then you can go to Canada we will transfer you on job but uh, I made a mistake uh, I was not able to balance between my personal and professional life and I denied I resigned from my job. because i was under the illusion that because i have extensive experience i will find a job very easily but it's not that way if i would have listened to my you know my seniors there my my leaders there i would have stayed back just for 6 months i would have come to canada on job that was a mistake so always make sure you maintain a balance between your personal and professional lives i'm not saying that don't take a personal decision Uh, you know when it comes to um, you know something personal but always make sure that you don't regret it later so um, when we came to canada i was a mother of a child my daughter was 1 year old and it was it was very difficult for me to go for interviews you know because nobody was there to take care of her so there was a gap from 2007 till 2020 for one year during this whole tenure of 13 to 14 years there was a year when i was completely idle and that was the most depressing part because a person who who has continuously worked it's de depressing for you when you you know when you have nothing to do so i was under the impression i will i will be able to find a job immediately but it's nothing like that if some of you are planning for coming to you know coming to other countries or coming overseas for studies or for uh, you know professional careers make sure you uh, you know make a backup before you come here so um, my 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 partner he he was very supportive so he asked me to join some bridging programs here so i joined humber college it's a very reputed college here in toronto i joined humber college for a bridging program so let me tell you these bridging programs are not for freshers they are for prof you know already experienced professionals who have extensive experience back home and they just want to bridge the gap between their education their experience back home and their experience here in canada because work culture between two countries is completely different the way the way we work in india is completely different from the way we work here in canada work pressures are different you know life is different work culture is different you know the way we greet each other is different so i had to join that bridging program for um, six months it was a six months period i mean i was not free for a year during the first six months i was free and then the next six months i was doing that bridging program but uh, the regret i had was i was learning the same technologies that i have worked on for over 8 years right so it was very very sad and very boring for me that i am learning the same technologies just because i am not able to find a job and my daughter is too young for me to go into the environment to go for interviews but let me tell you that bridging program that humber college the education here has helped me a lot i was able to acquire my first job again with mckesson canada mckesson canada is a pharmaceutical company i worked there but it was not as per my expectations but it was still really a very good job in it um i got my second opportunity uh, just after 4 months with compucom it's an american firm again it's just it works like other it companies like tcs and you know wipro infosys it's like it it takes uh, outsourcing projects to it so they work on it services refining the services for the clients so compucom uh, was a really good company where i learned about gaming it was i, I worked for a gaming project there okay just give me a minute
All right. So after uh, after CompuCom, um, again, I got the opportunity. Um, Wipro came to Humber College. When they got to know that I, I was, uh, I started my career with Wipro back in 2007, they got interested in me. They did interviews on me and, you know, a couple of rounds and I was able to crack that interview. And since last two years, I am with Wipro as IT administrator lead. It's a very good position. I'm learning a lot. And this has given me, you know, um, independence being a woman here in Canada. It has given me financial stability, uh, though I have a very good life partner, but still it has given me, you know, it has evolved me as a person. So this is my journey so far, you know, as a professional. And uh, I'm really, really happy being with Wipro right now. Uh, last August, I completed two years. So if you have any questions till now, please let me know, because after this, we are going to start with uh, how you are supposed to, you know, prepare for the interviews. The placements will uh, i'll share some slideshows with you to talk about that so if you have any questions please do let me know uh, just a reminder for students please be sure to type your questions into the chat box you can continue thank you so much professor Sambi. so i'll be sharing a slideshow with you right now it's a ppt let me turn off my camera and Uh, Sandeep, are you able to see my screen, Professor yes, Sandeep? Okay, wonderful. So, um, placement preparation. What you all need to do to prepare for a placement. So now, um, as this quote says here, your best quote that reflects your approach. That should reflect your approach, actually. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. So as the quote says here, from the definition, we can understand that becoming successful is not just wanting something. It is working day to day, day by day towards your goal. Even if you see no output, keep working towards your goals. You will see the results in end for sure. Hard work and dedication is the key to succeed. We have everybody knows that, you know, we, you know, we read a lot of quotes about this. So basically there is no shortcut to success you have to you know make sure you get good grades you prepare for your interviews people who work hard never regret output and results it could be less but hard work pays you for sure okay so with this quote let's start with the practical tips for great interview what you all need to prepare for a great interview if anybody can give their inputs, if anybody is willing to give their inputs, I'm happy to have it here. Else, I'll start with uh, my points here. Okay, so the uh, first point like, here is... Uh, it looks like we have a few questions. Okay. There is one question uh, from a student Karamveer. Mm -hmm. uh, is it better to work in Canada than India? Okay, so it's nothing like that. 
Uh, as far as you are placed in a very good organization, as far as you are getting very good, you know, pay rate and you are settled in your job, doesn't matter if you are in India, Canada, America, anywhere. Every country has their own challenges. Okay, so when you are on a job, your job, you will face the same challenges challenges everywhere it environment is same everywhere it's just it's just that work culture is different i was emphasizing more on the work culture side but not on the challenges so i loved my jobs in india it was a very good experience i worked in noida i worked in gurgaon i worked in delhi i worked in all three you know cities there it was it was very good experience i got a lot of exposure so it doesn't make a difference I hope I answered your question, but um, the only difference, as I said, it's just the work culture, the way we work here and the way we work in India, it's different. Uh, Sandeep? Yes, sir. Uh, I think I, we can keep uh, uh, question and answers at the last, like we have kept okay. the schedule. Let like Amal continue for the timing, you know? Okay, sir. Yeah, right. Thank you. All right, so um, as I said, let's talk about practical tips for great interview. The first point here is do more than just basic research. I hope you are able to see my screen. So do more than just basic research. What does that imply? It's like when we go for an interview, don't just search about when the company was founded, who was the first CEO of the company, who's the current CEO of the company. Dig more into the company's background like areas, domains that company works for, product services it has to offer to its clients. Dive into Quora. There is a website called Quora, Glassdoor, and other sources for interview uh, experiences. And always brush up on the products that company has to offer. So some companies are product-based companies. Some companies are service-based companies. So make sure you do a proper homework before going for any interview. If you're going for a TCS interview, just research about the company. Don't research about just the history of the company when it was founded because nobody is going to question you that people will question you more into the environment of the company so the first point implies here do more than just basic research about the company now second question second point here prepare to answer behavioral questions using the SAR format what is uh, first thing what is this behavioral question so uh, behavioral questions are like the questions uh, the interviewer asks for example, you know, for example, they will ask you, okay, tell us a scenario where you made a mistake and how you corrected it. Tell us a scenario, you know, uh, you were, you excelled in any project. So you have to tell those answers in a SAR format. SAR basically is situation, action, and the result. So you have to create a hypothetical situation there. If not hypothetical, pick up any situation from your college life. For example, now, if, if the interviewer or the recruiter asks you a question, like, tell us a, a time when you uh, created a mark or it created a good impression on professors. Now, you will tell them that, okay, I, um, I excelled in my assignments, I was doing that. No, please answer it according to SAR format. This is a behavioral question that how you impressed your professors, how you were able to gain their confidence. So create a situation. Like I was asked to present a PowerPoint on networking basics. This was a situation. Action that I took, I took a week or two to brush up my skills on networking before preparing a PPT. I made sure that PPT is professional. I made sure it was detailed and focused on covering every minute topic of networking. And the end result, end result was that I excelled in my presentation. And it was considered the best PPT ever. So I was appreciated by my professors or my fellow students for the exceptional work. This is the way you will answer a behavioral question. Now, the third point here is prepare for common interview questions. What is a common interview question? It is a question that every company, every big firm, every big brand will ask you. For example, they will start with, okay, tell me about yourself. This is the question that every company is going to ask you. How did you hear about this position? Why you want to work with us? Your strengths and weaknesses, very important your strengths and weaknesses. Being a fresher, this question is asked most of the times. What is your greatest achievement so far, being a student? These are the questions. These are the common questions. You have smartphones in your hands. At our times, we never got those, you know, those facilities. So you can, you can Google everything. You can you know, learn about many of such you know, scenarios 
from YouTube, from Google, from, you know, search the forums. So the first question, tell me about yourself. You know, it, this question seems simple. It seems pretty simple. So many people, but many people fail to prepare for it because it's really crucial. Don't give your complete, you know, don't give your complete employment or, you know, personal history in this question. Don't start talking, okay, I was doing this back home and, you know, I was, uh, I was uh, a student in, in school and I achieved this percentile and then I got placed in this particular college. Don't start with all of that. Talk a little about your current role. If you're a graduate, talk about your graduation, you know, then give some background as how you got there and experience you have that's relevant to the job. Finally, end it up with why you want and would be a perfect for this uh, perfect fit for this job. So prepare accordingly. Prepare for all the common interview questions. Now the next point here is make sure you make a great first impression. So when it comes to making a good first impression, body language is most important. I know when we go for an interview, we are a bit nervous, right? But uh, you know. Um, the bet is you can hide your nervousness, you know, behind your courage. Use your body language to show your positive attitude. Make eye contact with the recruiter. Smile. Your handshake should be firm. It should not be like shaky handshakes are never good. Make sure your handshake is firm with the recruiter. Recruiter should not feel that you are nervous at any point during the interview. This is the best way to make a, uh, you know, first impression on the recruiter. And adding to that, be dressed up right and the last point here is practice and practice repeating or practicing in front of mirror or some friend helps you gain confidence so you can ask your a friend you know you know you can ask your friend to read you potential questions to you you know ask him to read potential questions that interviewer is going to ask you just like articulate them and try practicing answers in front of your friend or if you can take help from a professor that is a brilliant idea Try articulating your answers out loud. Do mock interviews. And if, you're, uh, if your professors help you during those mock interviews, it's again a very, you know, very good input. And you will be able to learn. You will be able to uh, prepare for the interview very well. So practice and practice is the key. So this is just the basic practical tips for a great interview. Now let's move to the technical preparation which is again most important because most of the brands have um, their uh, you know entrance test exams that you need to clear which includes the aptitude test which and I, I bet a lot of materials are available online for aptitude course material practice test puzzles be it pen and paper exercise or a computer uh, aided test executing one flawlessly requires preparation so make sure your aptitude is strong enough before you appear for any interview the first round of the interview so please solve sample papers, you know, when, whenever you have free time at home now, because uh, everybody is at home, you, you need, need not to travel to college. So you have some time over there that you can spare for aptitude tests. Solve sample papers. There are ample of aptitude test papers available online and in the market as well. You can get good books for aptitude tests. It includes your uh, com skills generally, which is in English, logical reasoning, which is again very important. Domain knowledge, domain knowledge as in networking knowledge, right? And then um, uh, operating system knowledge, all the domain knowledge questions. Uh, quantitative ability. Quantitative ability is again mathematical problems and calculations. Numeric ability of a candidate in core technical and non-technical aspects, which is very important. So this covers your aptitude. Make sure you are good at logical reasoning. Do more practice, you know, you're good at domain knowledge. I, I bet you are learning because we have also gone through the same subjects during our college life. You are learning networking, you are learning DBMS, you are learning operating systems. So all these subjects are really important for you. Subject basics, data structures, DBMS, operating system, computer networks. So be prepared for that. I'm not asking you to, I'm not suggesting you to go very deep into those. Just prepare the basics. Your basics should be clear for every subject which is very important for our job because as a fresher, they will, they will look after basics. They know that you will get refined on the job. They are not looking for very uh, high tech um, knowledge from your end. They are looking for basics so that uh, they, they know they will teach you, they will train you on job. So these, these uh, technical preparations are really important when you go for an interview. 
Now, um, when you the day you go for an interview, what all you need? Pick your best outfit. You know, pick a formal out uh, attire. You want to dress appropriately and professionally. Show up neat and groomed, which is really important. Practice greeting your interviewer. So, as I already told you, we discussed this uh, this particular point that your handshake should be firm when you are greeting your interviewer with proper eye contact. Avoid sounding nervous. Practice how you will greet your interviewer before you go to the interview. Study your resume and bring all documents. So um, there are prerequisites when you go for an interview. They have mentioned all the documents that are required. So make sure you have extra uh, resume along with you. Don't take just one copy of resume. And make sure you study your resume thoroughly before going. Don't mention everything in your resume that you don't know. You should know about all the bullet points in your res resume that you have mentioned. Your CV should look professional. Be prepared in case they're, they are questioning you for anything mentioned in your resume. So you should know basically everything about your CV. Practice your answers to the most common interview questions, as I already told you. Research the company and the job position you are applying for. You should know about the job position, uh, you know, what kind of job is, uh, is it and what kind of roles and responsibilities will be expected out of you for that job. Last but not the least, be on time. For an interview, just be there before the actual interview starts. Be there 10 minutes before, which is really important. And it gives a professional you know, impression of you to the interviewer and to the company as a whole. These are the steps which are really important for you. Now, the most important things here, you think that comes here is these key points which are needed for you to prepare for the interview. Eligibility criteria. I know that most of you might be aware, you know, you are more smarter than me. Uh, current age students are, you know, more into, uh, you know, researching the companies and doing the, you know, uh, research stuff. So many companies have an eligibility criteria of 60 to 65 percent, right? Um, I, I'm not sure about the cutoff these days for freshers, but uh, please try to focus on getting a decent overall percentage in graduation so that you get eligible for all the big brands. Eligibility, if, if you're not eligible for a brand, you won't be able to enter the entrance test, right? So eligibility criteria is most important. Now, the foremost important thing here is stay, staying active on job portals. There are uh, numerous job portals that I am aware of back home, uh, like Monster is there, Nokri.com is there, Freshers Word is there, Shine is there, LinkedIn is there. So visiting career pages of every big brand to see the present trend and job openings, which is really important. You can visit in, uh, the website of every uh, big brand. Infosys has a website, TCS has a website. Go to the careers page of those websites and see the latest trends, latest job opportunities they're looking for. So staying active on job portals is really important. Third point is LinkedIn profile. It's a professional profile. I hope most of you might have the profile already. LinkedIn profile is really important because through this profile, you meet many other professionals who are doing excellent in their jobs. You get to know professionals and current technologies that are in demand. Also, you get references through LinkedIn. So whenever you want to uh, interact with anybody you think uh, is of interest for you, you can always send a private message to them very, very humbly and you know, in, in a very positive way, asking for a guidance on your job search. So you get a lot of mentors on LinkedIn, which is really important. And LinkedIn profile should be 100% complete. Don't just enter your name and everything and keep it that way. Make it professional. Add as, as, as much things you can add, as many things as you can. Add your experiences back home in college. Add your you know, professional experiences working on any project in the college. So add as much as you can on a LinkedIn profile. Com skills, you know, everybody knows that they are most important. Excellent com skills includes active listening, choice of words, which is really important. So it, it's not just com skills. Doesn't mean that you are speaking all the time. Active listening is also a part of com skill, which is which is very important, you know. And choice of words. Make sure you are not uh, choosing any negative words while speaking. Try to choose as positive as you can. Sound positive. Sound friendly. Sound confident. And most important, you should be empathetic. You, you know, you you should show the that you are understanding the person emotions of the other person who is in front of you. 
your com skills should be should portray a positive attitude and positive mindset which is very important now the next point professional resume i already told you about that that showcase your works in your resume if you have worked on any project during the college time mention that on your resume if you have taken any trainings during you know your internships during the college mention all the work that you have done there on the professional resume which is very important join forums online there are you know numerous forums online there are numerous sample test papers and interview patterns for various companies so you know tcs as has a trend it has a trend for last 10 years similarly wipro has their own trend for last 10 years you will get a lot of forums where people discuss about current trends of a particular company you can search for that you know if you want to if you are going for an interview with the infosys there is a uh, forum over there on internet which you can search for and the people discuss a uh, how's the trend there you know what kind of questions infosys is asking so interview patterns are are available online so you can go to uh, numerous websites and search about any company that you are going for so that's all for uh, interview preparation now there are numerous technologies in advance these days everything is cloud based so uh, most of the technologies are going on cloud uh, less on the you know physical servers as you can see in this slide data vis visualization it is a graphical representation of data using statistical graph plots this is a very important uh, career if anybody wants to go towards it there are numerous certifications available cyber security is one of the leading jobs here in canada uh, very high paying jobs and really you know fascinating protection of computer system from theft or damage you know hacking so that comes under cyber security cloud computing is there database administration which i am part of or oracle sql it's there data science i have uh, i think we have a few seniors uh, who are in who are data scientists as well i'll try to see if i can get hold of anybody and we can arrange a lecture for you uh, that is again very important technology that is evolving these days artificial uh, artificial intelligence is again there digital marketing is there marketing uh, products on internet you might you all of you use facebook right so you might have seen lot of ads there digital marketers who who market ads so there are jobs for digital marketing as well which is part of it again then um, system administration is there these are these are traditional jobs system admin network engineering software testing these are all you know traditional jobs but these are jobs that will go for long run they will never expire these kind of jobs stay in the market because you still use you know you still use servers you still use databases you still use networks to connect software is always there you prepare new apps you know you do coding part software testing again it's a white box and black box testing these kind of i have seen this pattern not just in india but in canada as well these uh, these all technologies are very um, you know very much needed they are still in demand and they are really good okay so that's all for interview preparation in case any of you have any questions please do let me know before we move towards uh, uh, basically this uh, this webinar was uh, I, i was trying to make it more technical but uh, uh, as per our discussions with the professors i made it towards you know kind of sharing interview experiences sharing my personal experiences with you uh, but i have some part to show you from a uh, uh, technical part as well it's like i will take some time i have pre uh, prepared slides for that in case you have questions please do let me know before we move on to the next part thank you uh, thank you uh, anjana ramanpreet students are really enlightened with your knowledge so with all that we will go ahead and take some time for questions there is one question uh, from gunit singh how you made entry into wipro so this is his question what things okay. are uh, so if you have opportunity there uh, sandeep can you please repeat i am not able to hear you uh, his question is how you made entry into wipro what things are important to get opportunity there 
All right. So, uh, as I already told you that when I graduated from uh, Banda Singh Bahadur Engineering College, I was not uh, focused. I was not clear about my goals. But once I uh, once I was done with my education, the very next day I was feeling like I am completely idle. I have nothing to do. Right. So within one month, I got my first job in Wipro. As I told you, I took the initiative and I went to Delhi. Rented out a PG there without a job and looked for walk-in interviews. You get a lot of references there. You get a lot of friends who help you and tell you that you know at particular this particular company is arranging a walk-in. So I, all my jobs in India were through a walk-in interview. There are some job portals where walk-in interviews are being advertised. They they tell you that you know um, you know there is a walk-in interview. I got this I got this job opportunity through a friend. He he told me that there is a walk-in interview happening at Wipro. I went there. As I told you, there are three different rounds. First, uh, entrance test, which I was able to clear because of good aptitude, and the second round is technical round where asked they asked me just the, just very basic questions of networking. I remember it's 13 years back, so I don't remember exactly, but they were like basic questions, very basic questions. And the the, the last uh, round there was for commit com skills. They asked me some, um, they gave me some situations uh, where they tested my you know language, where they tested my English, and then once once all three rounds were clear, uh, finally I got the offer letter. So there were three rounds uh, with Wipro, and all were through a walk-in interview. Thank you, ma'am, for your guidance. Now I request uh, Major General Dr. G. S. Lamba, Principal BBS BEC, to address the participants. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sandeep. Very good morning to everyone. I was listening to Aman Preet, and uh, it gives me the first impression. Of listening to Amar Preet as a very, very confident and very professional approach, the way Amar Preet has handled today's webinar. So I, at the outset, thank Amar Preet for showing this compassion and. Sharing his sharing her wisdom and experiences of the college as well as of his last thirteen years experience that she has gathered, and I also wish her uh, great success in her career in future too. She is in the right company. Wipro is one of the leading software companies which not only serves. the basic software requirement also has a great name in maintenance of software testing of software upgradation of software undertaking new field and green projects i know of just another engineer my uh, elder brother son who completed his uh, engineering from baba banda singh bahadur engineering college only Uh, and he passed out in uh, 2018 first he did a job in chandigarh which after going through the profile of the company i told him that okay on campus you got selected but this is not your destination he served there for about 2 months then he kept preparing the way somebody asked uh, amanpreet that how did you get into wipro it is all question of how aware you are how much you are trying and how much you are preparing yourself uh, she is very uh, from her practical experience shared with you lot of hints how to go about things how to prepare yourself for interview how to prepare yourself for various rounds technically as well as in your comp skills and let me tell you uh, boys and girls that what companies are looking for they are not looking for excellent people they are looking for excellent team workers who can work into teams because there is no project which can be done singly by a person or by one or two persons most of the projects in the mncs are done by teams so you need to be 
a person who can work in a team your team behavior your team spirit your preparation and the cooperation which you can extend share your experience and learn from your colleagues as well as juniors this is one skill which now even after having uh, put in almost uh, 45 years of service that i i am always open to learning today when i was listening to aman pre there were few things possibly which i was thinking that if i had known these things earlier pos maybe uh, i may have done something better now of course i am almost 65 years so i don't have to look for any career options but definitely it is the experience of the younger generation because they are the ones who are exposed to mnc's way of working when i look at my sons who are working there uh, there is lot which i pick up from them so one has to remain open even when you pick up a job you have to remain open minded to learn from anywhere whether it is a fourth class employee of that company or maybe a ceo of the company so once again i uh, thank very much uh, amanpreet for the kind of dispose that she has given to you and shared her experience with you and uh, uh, i was happy to see that she was sharing very very practical points and minor points also she was guiding you i only hope that you take lot of clues from this and importance of developing your communication skills along with your technical skills they go hand in hand and when the companies are picking up there are few companies which have five rounds like i i'll just share with you uh, royal bank of scotland rbs where my younger son is working generally their interviews are five rounds and there are five different people who are conducting those five rounds and every every one of them is looking for a particular quality in you whether you have the aptitude to learn you have the aptitude to de learn whatever you have done and learn new things uh, based on the company's priorities uh, these are the qualities which one has to uh, develop uh, i wish the computer department uh, which has organized this interaction with our alumni and uh, i am very happy to see the uh, number of present participants who are uh, listening to and watching this webinar i would uh, urge the computer department to keep organizing this kind of interaction because this is the use of technology and this opportunity uh, possibly which covid has given us would have never come we you never planned otherwise uh, to get your uh, alumni for such far off distances and uh, make them interact with the students uh, this is one positive thing of this lockdown uh, which uh, we have seen and i am happy to see that in the college uh, there are about six webinars by different departments which have been conducted out of them at least two have been conducted by the alumni experts uh, so thank all the participants the computer department and once again thank uh, amanpreet Uh, for sharing her experience and wisdom uh, with all the participants uh, good day and uh, jai hind thank you so much sir thank you for your kind word sandeep uh, just one minute there are some questions in the chat box i think we can uh, have query session uh, first then uh, dr manpreet can uh, start with hai na okay sir uh, just to let you know that we are not if we are running out of time that's fine but uh, i wanted to share itl with the students because that is really important for their careers okay uh, okay fine uh, just, just one two minute if we have the question i think let aman preet firstly because he has prepared something specially so don't worry about the time whatever time you need yes, sir, yes. Uh, yeah it, it's flexible sir <laughs> uh Sandeep, if you can read one two questions, then uh, Manpreet can start with, which are in the chat box, right? Okay, sir. Uh, okay, so I've... there is one question uh, from one student, Jimmy. Do higher education like M Tech will help to acquire a job easy, easily? 
Okay, so okay, I was reading this question already. So, um, doing a higher education will acquire a job easily. I won't comment on that. But yes, uh, higher education evolves you as a person. It evolves you as uh, with your technical skills. You can get a job after BTEC as well if you are prepared enough, and you can get a job after MTEC as well if you are prepared enough. It doesn't matter if you are a MTEC, then only you will get a job. So MTech is just adding on, you know, it's it's adding another diamond to your necklace, right? It's kind of adding another, uh, it's kind of adi adding another degree to your uh, to your uh, education. It's really good if you have. It's it's a personal choice purely. If you are getting the option to do MTech, please go for it. It's really important if you're uh, post graduated. It's really good. Especially, I can I can comment on Canada's, uh, you know, um, according to Canada's uh, environment, the work culture. Yes, post graduation helps you a lot here. Either a post graduation or if you have certifications, if you have professional certifications, they help you a lot. But if you are prepared, even after DTEC, you will get a job easily. All you need to do is brush up your comm skills, your aptitude skills, and your technical skills. Hope I answered your question. Okay, ma. Uh, there is one qu more question. Uh, which is better, product-based company or service-based company? Harshdeep is asking. Okay, so product-based company. Uh, if I talk about product-based company, uh, Jaguar and Land Rover is a product-based company, right? And Wipro, Infosys. Uh, HCL, these companies are service-based companies. It depends upon the revenue that the company is generating. It doesn't, um, you know, it, it doesn't uh, make any difference if it's a product-based company. It, till the time you are getting a good designation, you are getting a good, you know, uh, a good uh, paycheck. You are getting a good growth in the company. It is good for you. Only thing I want to comment is small companies, small scale, uh, small scale companies give you better growth. You have more opportunities there. But in the big companies, in big brands, you evolve as a technical person. You evolve as a professional. OK, so Gaurav uh, Puri is asking which option is better, job or business? It's your personal choice. Um, Business is also uh, well if if you know how to do a business, if you know uh, how to you know uh, get that pro proper approach to you know run a business. If you are good at if you are a business mind person, surely you will succeed at it. But if you are doing a job, put your hundred percent in it, in it, and you will succeed there as well. Thank you, ma'am. I think now, without further ado, we will turn the time uh, over to distinguished speaker, Amanpreet Kaur. Then you can continue with your presentation. Thank you, Professor Sandeep. So, uh, OK, let me share my screen first. Uh, are you able to see my screen, Professor Sandeep? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Okay, thank you so much. Now, uh, what is ITL? If I, if you see this term ITL, um, I, uh, I choose this topic because it's it's really important for uh, everyone you know, who's uh, who belongs to IT industry. ITL, formerly known as as information technology infrastructure library. So it is a set of detailed practices for IT service management, basically. It is basically for service-based companies. It is really important if you uh, get recruited in uh, big brands. Uh, examples you know, TCS, uh, Wipro, Infosys, CGI, all these companies which are service-based companies, ITL is being followed there. Doesn't matter if you are a, prof a professional, doesn't matter if you are a fresher, once you are into an IT company, you will abide by, you will follow the rules of ITL. So ITL, as I already told you, it is basically, um, it's a set of detailed practices for uh, IT service management that focuses on aligning IT services 
with the needs of business now needs of business when i talk about needs of business it's just like uh, we have got clients right if i work for wipro we have some certain clients for which we work in wipro i told you jlr was my client dow jones was our client so those companies outsource their it services to these brands so managing those services uh, you know uh, we require certain set of processes to manage those services itl describes processes procedures tasks and checklists which are which are neither organization specific nor technology specific so all the processes that i am talking about they are common in every organization they are not organization specific they can be applied by any organization towards strategy delivering value to clients when we when we uh, talk about this you know um, it and service comes into our mind what is service first right what I, when i when i talk about service what does i mean when i say service a service is a means of delivering value to customers customers here means the big brands those outsource their business to us like J jlr like um, zimmer like um, any any other client dow jones those companies outsource their business to big it companies so service is a means of delivering value to those customers by facilitating the outcomes that the customer wants to achieve without the ownership of specific costs and risks so most of the organizations those are product based organizations they don't want to you know run their it by themselves they want to outsource it outsource it so when they outsource it they have some certain expectations from the firm that it's so no when when a when a contract is signed between infosys and any third party client a contract is made there are certain you know there are certain um, expectations that are kept and certain expectations that infosys is abiding by and is agreeing to so without the ownership of specific costs and risks product based company doesn't want to spend cost and doesn't want to face the risks uh um, which belong you know the the risk that comes with it management so they outsource it they outsource their service as i as i already told you about service what is an it service an it service is a set of it related functions it includes hardware and software i choose this topic because this topic is very important doesn't matter if you are a fresher so once you enter into a company whatever you do in your routine tasks you will follow itl it's a user here you can see it's a user here user is doing some work on his computer then then if he's uh, if he's sending some query that query will go to web server from the web server it will go to the application server the application portal and from there it will go to the database server so the result the final result is fetched from the database server it will go back to the users following the same pattern so the this is a service when a user uh, wants to you know get some outputs he will send a query now these three things that comes in picture database application and web server these are the hardware and softwares that an it company manages for the client it service management is the totality of it service provision including the management of the infrastructure and the environment so when a service is being outsourced we don't manage just the service we don't just manage their software we manage their hardware as well infrastructure which includes servers databases storage sand disks everything their hardware part their data centers we are managing their infrastructure their hardware and their environment environment includes applications their softwares their coding part everything so good it service management ensures that the customer requirement and expectations are met what is the basic objective of it service management to align it services with the current and future needs of the business if jlr is outsourcing its uh, business to me then it's my duty to manage and you know meet their demands make sure their current and future needs are met so that i you know and the company doesn't go on downtime downtime doesn't go on you know because there is a zero downtime tolerance in it to improve the quality of the it service delivered so whatever services we are providing to our clients we need to make sure that the quality of those services is also met we just don't provide the services we make sure the quality is also maintained so there is continual service improvement that takes place along with the you know delivering the service to reduce the long term cost of service provision 
if a company has provided me um, you know they have outsourced their business to me then it is my duty to make sure that the cost is minimal you know provisioning the service the cost is minimal so basically this triangle shows you needs cost and quality there is a equilibrium there is a balance between all three needs and cost and quality should be you know it should be uh, equal it should be met full form i already told you itl is information technology infrastructure library basically it's a library of processes there is nothing it's not a physical thing itl is just a process it's a way it's a way of executing certain tasks that you meet the uh, client demands a library that can be used for organizing and managing it infrastructure developments and operations what are the work that itl do can we talk about itl what does it mean it provides a best practice framework for identifying planning delivering improving and supporting it services so it's it's not just that we are identifying a service we are identifying okay this kind of service has to be provided to the client we have to deliver it plan it we have to improve it alongside we are delivering today but tomorrow we are making some Im improvements in that so that the client is happy they are getting best productivity and supporting it services it enables it organizations to deliver services that satisfy the business needs and are aligned with business goals we already discussed this point itl describes the processes needed to manage the it infrastructure efficiently and effectively for example a company has two data centers that has data centers are where your hardware components are lying where the, your servers are installed where your databases storage is there where your networking is there so managing those data centers is the responsibility of the it firm so processes needed to manage the it infrastructure efficiently and effectively you know we are not just managing it we are making sure that it is managed efficiently within time there is no um, you know if a server goes down then we ha should have a secondary server backup ready because in it it is like zero tolerance for downtime there should be no downtime services should not be impacted services should still be running if our primary server goes down so basically it is to manage the services efficiently and effectively now this slide you know traditionally when itl was not there it companies were still there at that time but itl process was not introduced at that time it was a traditional approach as you can see i'm moving the mouse here it was leaders at the top it was a top down approach leaders were commanding middle management telling them that okay these these are the tasks that we need to follow do it anyway middle management was uh, commanding the employees and then employees were uh, you know working on their areas of work but since itl is introduced there is no boss it is like people who are uh, who have some defined roles for example i am a dba my duty is to manage databases right right now i am working as it admin lead so my duty is to make sure that wipro's internal it is being met without zero downtime so people have their own roles in different um, uh, you know uh, for example somebody is a storage admin somebody is a uh, web logic person somebody is a middle tier person so they have their defined roles and under their roles comes their subtasks so it is process oriented as i already told you so under subtask comes the processes every person has to follow their own processes and company's business is run without any issues so it is task oriented it it has no hierarchy it's non hierarchical there is no leader at the top it's just that uh, uh, um, uh, task comes in and everybody has to complete their part in that task basically it is process oriented so you can take this quote here think of itl not as a destination but as a vehicle you can use to help you travel more quickly and efficiently on your ongoing journey of continuously improving service levels so basically uh, you know it's better uh, you know uh, cycling than walking right so it is a it's, it is a vehicle who make it efficient for you to reach your destination ITL is organized around a service life cycle as i already told you uh, now i will give you an example here uh, when i uh, when i came to tcs and uh, i started my project with Jag jaguar and land rover uh, i was from the pilot batch i was lucky enough to uh, you know uh, to be selected as a, um, as an engineer in jlr because at that time jlr was just starting it was in the starting phase so 
jailer was not with wipro at the, uh, not with the uh, tcs at that time it was just starting so we were we were taking a handover from jlr and we were about to begin those services in tcs so it was a service life cycle i experienced the complete service life cycle being from the pilot patch of that project which includes service strategy service strategy you are planning for the service you are making a strategy for the service that what kind of uh, you know what kind of approach should be uh, followed to uh, you know deliver that service then we de then we design the service so i have gone through this phase as well designing the service which again requires a month or so then service transition because when when a it service comes to you you know to your company maybe they have outsources to some other company so you will take the transitioning from that third third party company to your company transitioning phase happens it's again depending upon how big is the project it could be one month or two month or it could be like 15 days transitioning after transitioning uh, after service transitioning final phase comes which is service operation finally it's a go live phase when the service gets go live in your in your own organization and you start delivering the service to the client final thing is continual service improvement plan which which keeps on going till the time you have that project in the company you continue continually improve the services of the company you plan you know plan changes to make into the databases to servers um, uh, you know uh, to the disks you are increasing the hardware you are decreasing the hardware depending upon the demand so continual service improvement goes side by side benefits of itlr your your business needs are aligned alignment with business needs negotiated achievable service levels so when two companies sign a contract right they negotiate with that what kind of service levels will be delivered it's not that if if somebody is my client they will come up with unexpected things to me i will already have a contract with them that so and so services will be provided and uh, we can't deny that but we won't go beyond that predictable customer service uh, service with consistent processes efficiency in service delivery uh, and the last point is measurable improve improvable services and processes so uh, the services that are are delivered they are measurable because we can measure them on different criteria uh, whenever we sign a contract with a company uh, uh, there are certain SLAs that we follow SLA is service level agreement we have an agreement with the second company that okay we will respond to your critical uh, you know critical services within five minutes of time we will uh, you know so it is a measurable service you can measure it improvable service at, at the same time you can improve the service ITL has n number of processes because uh, we have very less time. I won't go in detail because I haven't prepared the PPTs for that. I just let you know the you know just the basics and just the you know uh, just the main parts of it. So there are ten core processes of ITL. One com comes under service desk, and one comes under service level management. There are two parts. So these processes, incident management, problem management, configuration management, change management, release management, they are all part of service desk. Service level management is when you are managing the finances of the company, financial management, um, you know, to make a decision whether a new hardware is required or not, capacity management, whether you want to increase the servers or not, IT service continuity management, you know, whether we want to continue with the so-and-so client or not, availability management, so these are certain uh, you know processes that come under itl i will discuss only incident management and change management with you because these are the two services that you will see being a fresher what is an incident incident is basically unplanned interruption to a service for example it could be a big incident it could be a small incident um, my client, uh, you know, my client calls me and tells me that, you know, uh, my account is locked. One of the person who's working for them, one employee calls me and tells me that my account is locked. It is an incident as well, but it's a very low, um, you know, low effective incident. It's very low priority incident. So unplanned interruption to any IT service or an unplanned reduction in its quality is an incident. Workaround is something that you uh, you eliminate the impact of an incident without resolving it. So you don't know the root cause of the incident. You don't know how to resolve it. You don't have a solution for that particular incident that happened. But you have found a workaround for that. You have found a way to make it operational again. But you're still looking for a root cause, why it happened, and how you can re uh, you know solve it permanently. So it's a workaround. 
problem comes when under un, un, uh, you know unknown underlying cause of one or more incidents so problem happens when you are getting same incident on daily basis okay at that time uh, there are some blockage happening on the server but you are not able to find the root cause it's a problem then a problem ticket will be created that we, um, you know the experts have to work on it to find out why it's happening on daily basis why at this particular time frame this server goes down you know the, this is problem management but we won't discuss that in detail uh, you can see from this uh, small chart here incident management problem management problem management has root cause of related incidents you you find out the root cause why these incidents are happening on daily basis incident uh, incident management includes errors outages and service request when i told you that my account is locked it's also an incident but there could be bigger incidents as well critical incidents uh, for example outage happened for particular application that application has gone down or particular field is not uh, visible in that application it's also an incident it's a critical one or we could say it is a medium priority incident so this is all itl when you are managing services at various levels we are managing incidents of the services you are managing the problems you are uh, you know managing changes what is change change management is you have identified the problem and you uh, you know you have found a solution as well but to implement that solution into the production environment is making a change to it you know um, normally when whenever we are doing a changes we make sure that it is saturday sunday because uh, we cannot implement a change during production hours so saturday sunday when workload is less and the company is not being impacted we continue with our change and we make sure that the secondary backup is up and running it becomes a primary and then we implement a change on primary so change management release management is another thing that we will not discuss because itl is something which i cannot you know explain to you in 15 minutes it's it's like something we need 15 hours at least to discuss about it it's very detailed incident management deals with unplanned interruptions to it services as i already told you any any incident that's happening uh, at the client level could be a account blocked could be outage could be service being impacted it is incident depending upon the priority it will be considered low medium or high failure of a configuration item that has not impacted a service is also an incident uh, i i hope you are guys are aware of raid right raid is a redundant array of independent disks right in a raid uh, there are multiple disks in, installed and uh, you know if one disk goes out it doesn't make an impact because rest of the you know service is operational but failure of a configuration item here as well is a incident though it's not impacting your business it's not impacting a service but it's a low low key incident it's a low priority incident so incidents can be reported by users it can be reported by monitoring tools it can be reported by technical staff users i already told you any anybody can call you reporting a incident a monitoring tool is something a service desk people use so uh, every company every project has a service desk where they have a monitoring tool uh, and they get uh, continuous alerts on that tool uh, stating that uh, you know so and so server has gone down so and so server has a technical issue you know th this particular database has gone down this user account is locked this user account is not found so monitoring tools are there to monitor these incidents and uh, if service desk people calls you tell, telling you that that particular server has got some issue then it has been reported by a monitoring tool technical staff is again if i am facing some issues with the database and um, you know when i am doing some research on my database i found out that this is because uh, we have some issue with the server or we have some issue with the middle tier then i will call the middle tier team then i am a technical person who's calling the middle tier team telling them that you know there is a problem in the middle we are in the web logic because of that i got a problem in the database so it's again an incident change management as i already told you this is one of the most central and most important itl processes change manager should have a good overview some in depth knowledge in key areas and knows lot of the local history when when we are going to implement the change there is a change manager he should be aware of why we are making this change he should be aware of the local history that why this change has been created uh, what was the root cause uh, you know that this change has been created why we want to implement it in the production environment 
So in goal is to ensure that all the changes are performed in a structured, documented, and well-planned process. So if I'm uh, defining a change today that we need to make a change in this particular environment, I need to make I need to create a new database, for example, uh, in the production environment because this is the need of the hour. It will it won't be you know it won't take place immediately. It won't take place like in in one week I will create it. No, it has to be structured. First, we will discuss about it. We will create its structure. We will create its steps that how we're going to implement it. We will document it. And it will be a well-planned process. There is a CAB. CAB is a change advisory board. They will approve that change. Then only that change will take place in the environment. Balance between flexibility, what needs to be done right now, and stability so that changes do not break anything. So when we are implementing a change, you know, we have to be flexible enough to, you know, roll back that change if it causes adverse impact. For example, I have created a database, but it is increasing, increasing the workload on my server and it is again causing an issue. Then I should have a backup plan ready to roll back, you know, to roll back that change. So it should be flexible and stable. Changes do not break anything. Now, when, when I talk about change management, there are certain roles, change manager, change coordinator. Coordinator is the person who coordinates the change between various teams. When implementing a change, it's not just database team is implementing a change, only data, database team will be in picture. Networking team will come in picture because that server has to be down, right? And then uh, uh, storage team will come in picture because we will need their uh, help, you know, placing the disks and then uh, another team, uh, uh, system admin team will come into picture. So basically, change coordinator is the person who coordinates with all those teams to implement that particular change. Change, change advisory board includes uh, different levels, different people who will sign off, who will approve that change in the system, and then that change will be implemented. Emergency committee is the committee if the if the change has to be rolled back. There are one or two people, very key people, very VIP people, uh, who are uh, who, who are responsible to approve that change to approve that rollback okay this is impacting production we have to roll back it then emergency committee will come into picture we have to uh, you know let them know that this change is impacting us so they will approve and we will roll it back i already discussed this with you classification uh, classification is based on priority and category low impact category significant impact great impact Similarly, priority is low. If if it is uh, if a if a incident is affecting only one individual, one person, it is a low priority because that person is impacted, not the whole service. Normal is like it's like uh, we have a SLA service level agreement for normal, like fifteen minutes. We have to you know accept that uh, that incident within fifteen minutes. So it's a normal. Higher level is we have to um, you know accept it within ten minutes. Urgent is we have to accept it within five minutes. It will be a severity. It will be a loss. So we have to take an action immediately. Now, uh, I wanted to talk about this in detail, but I don't think uh, we have enough time. BMC Remedy is a ticketing tool that we use uh, for managing ITL only. It's, a, it's like it's an automation tool. It helps you manage incidents, changes, you know, problems, release. Um, everything. So it is basically an IT ticketing tool which enables your IT organization to track and manage your IT processes, activities, and assets. It's a software suite designed to, for a more efficient IT service management. It provides you easy and efficient automation of IT related functions. As I told you, that you know, uh, bicycling is better than walking, right? Uh, it is a vehicle for you. In, similarly, we have n number of ticketing tools in the market, but BMC Remedy is uh, the most used. It's a licensed tool. It's the most used tool in IT industry. So that's why I choose this one. I have worked on other ticketing tools like Zendesk, et cetera, but I don't want to emphasize on those because this is the one that is really important. And many of you, once you enter IT, you will, uh, you will get acquainted with this tool. BS, BMC Remedies ITSM suite contains four applications. It has service desk, it has asset management, it has service level management, uh, remedy change management. So I won't go in the details. Uh, I will show you just slides. Uh, this is the, you know, you can see the screen here. This is the main screen of BMC Remedy. You can, uh, basically this is, a, this lies on as a shortcut on your main desktop once you are into the company, into a particular project. Otherwise you can go to start programs. Um, it has given the path. 
which is not needed for now because uh, we want don't want to go into the details this is the screen looks like you enter your username as per your project you enter your password and this ok button will be enabled you go inside the tool now every incident has a unique number which we call incident id for example any incident comes this is the queue where incidents comes so you can see uh, this is mail server mls has a fatal error in the exchange database so this is an incident it's critical priority i just wanted to you to feel it you to see it right how it is prioritized so this is critical priority incident St status is assigned it is assigned to network operations team somebody from the network operations it is assigned to their group so somebody will pick it up from that, that bucket and this will be shown here assign will show here so similarly there's another incident here in the bucket database restart is required then replace monitor due to breakage so these are all incidents some are medium priority some are critical and when you click on particular incident this screen opens up which shows the incident id company from where it has come the customer name right and the other thing that you should know about is impact whether it is a significant impact it's low impact urgency it's critical priority it's critical again here you will see the work done on that particular incident working log so you will see if somebody from the storage team has already worked on that incident you will see the logs here at the bottom they will have mentioned that we started so and so services to resolve it but it's still impacting and we need to restart the database then it will come to you the database queue then you will see okay service team has reached uh, server team has restarted now it's our work so you can always monitor and this is very basic i'm telling you very basic so just to get you you know acquainted with this tool now this is your console under your console you can see all the number of incidents that are assigned on your name right now this is just a screenshot that i have taken so status is something and there's a drop down here you can select the drop down and you will get to know how many open tickets are there i'll show you in the next slide so this is the status uh, uh, drop down where you will see all open incidents all pending incidents resolved incidents closed incidents all incidents so you can filter them according to your choice if you want to see all the open tickets right now in the queue you can click on open incidents if you want to see the pending incidents that are pending with particular user you can see that if an, anything has been resolved and you want to look into that you can go to resolved incidents similarly role so here is a role uh, you can see the role uh, in the next slide assignee owner who's the owner of that incident to whom this is assigned right so this way you, you can filter any incident then there is an option for dates you can uh, search for all all incidents that are you know like 24 hours old 48 hours old 7 days till 90 days these are the old slides from bmc remedy now the vm uh, this tool has also evolved a lot i'm just um, you know i have attached only three four slides for you this is a vast tool once you are on job you can learn about it so assigned work under assigned work you will see um, you know how many incidents are assigned on your name you know and then it's your uh, then then you will prioritize them if it's a critical incident you will pick that before working on the second one you will work on a medium incident later if you have a critical incident in your queue so you have to prioritize accordingly so this is uh, again a slide from the same uh, remedy here is the summary here is the status urgency priority first name the customer's name it, because there are again tabs here when you click on customer tab you will see the first name uh, payroll number of the customer company's name and everything so that's all from remedy if you want to uh, learn about detailed you can always uh, you know, check on google there are a number of options available to learn about this tool but i would emphasize more on itl learn the process learn the you know learn the basics of that which is really important in your job that's all from my side thank you uh, thank you Omanpreet. it looks like uh, we have uh, covered all the questions now i request dr manpreet kaur head ric and in charge bbsbec alumni to present you of thanks Ma'am will Ma give the participants brief about alumni cell activities. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you so much. 
good morning one and all respected principal sir deans of various sections heads of the departments dear colleagues students and distinguished alumni of our college engineer amanpreet kaur i take immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks to one and all on this occasion first i would like to thank our speaker of the day alumni amanpreet kaur amanpreet i am very happy that you agreed to deliver the expert talk to our students you Thank donated you so your valuable time to offer career support to current students you shared your expertise and experiences you guided the right path to the students you gave very nice tips to the students to appear for an interview life is really tough our students must put lot of hard work and should be dedicated towards their work learning about new technologies along with core subjects is very important i hope the students will follow your advice and suggestions your talk must have motivated and inspired the students if any student wants you to take as a mentor throughout the undergraduate program i hope you will accept the request giving back to alumni shows the sign of your gratitude and affinity towards the college further i want you to give a brief about the college alumni cell and its activities i would like to share with you all that under the dynamic leadership of our principal sir the college has established an efficient alumni cell the alumni cell has been putting all efforts to strengthen the bond between the alumni and the alma mater some of the activities conducted regularly are annual alumni meet first hand student alumni interactions expert lectures from alumni and key placement initiatives the college takes a great pride in having deep and regular engagement with its socio economically well off alumni community comprising of more than 10000 professionals of 20 batches dear student the college always helps you to grow and in turn our alumni play their responsible roles in helping the college to grow alumni are very important stakeholders in well wishes my sincere advice to all students is that when you attend such programs listen to your alumni very carefully our alumni possess vast knowledge and expertise and our current students must take the benefit from them the aim of such interactions is to increase the potential of students through the advice expertise and experiences of our college graduates interacting with the alumni gives you practical knowledge and real life insights to specific industries and moreover you will obtain business experiences the program adds value to overall personality development of the student a strong and positive relationship with your senior will always benefit you socially academically and professionally further i request all alumni and current students to join the college alumni network register yourself as an alumni association member through our college alumni website realizing the importance of social media in this high tech age bbsbc alumni cell has created its own linkedin and facebook pages i request everyone to join the link to join the has been shared with you in the chat box by hod csc department thank you so much sir I am glad to share with you all that recently BBSBC Alumni Association has been registered as a society under the Societies Registration Act. We will continue doing more alumni activities and will introduce various scholarship schemes for the deserving students. I further request all alumni to participate in the activities organized by the college and to organize activities and with the banner of alumni association i extend my sincere thanks to our worthy principal sir for the permission motivation support and guidance 
he extend to all of us these alumni interaction programs are very important as these facilitate the academic and career related conversations between the alumni and the current students thanks to dr kamal veer singh hod csc department and all faculty and staff members students it is only the teamwork and untiring efforts and activity becomes successful i once again thank you our alumni amanpreet kaur for sparing her valuable time and guiding the right path to the current students i wish you a brighter and meaningful meaningful future all the best thank you and god bless you all thank you so much ma'am for your kind words all the best amanpreet thank you so much hopefully i made some meaning to all the students so uh i hope they yes, they, yes. they are able to learn yeah they will really follow your advice thank you so much thank you ma'am uh thank you everyone uh we have uh, given link to the platform i request all the participants to the platform thank you once again engineer aman ji Students for really enlightening with your knowledge. God bless. Thanks to our students for active participation. Uh, thank you very much, Amanpreet. It was a wonderful talk and a great uh, uh, lecture. I think uh, the experience which you had already moving from India to Canada, then into various companies, uh, it was really a great talk. And naturally, uh, students will benefit from this and will keep in touch with you in the future also. Uh, thank you for giving so much time. It is near about I think two hours we have uh, since we have started it today. and uh, it it was great to talk with you thank you thank you very much thank you